and welcome back now i thought it's time we had a bit of an ebay update because obviously lots of things pass my desk and uh, most of them go unnoticed really by you because i don't draw attention to them they're just bits and pieces that i use for my projects but occasionally i think no it's about time i, I told you about this and of course some bits uh, refer to previous projects or projects on the go even as we speak so i thought i'd just um, apprise you of a couple of bits and pieces um, because it's they're quite useful and um, good value for money so on the workbench here you can see various bits and pieces but uh, let's start with the mundane and work forward shall we i think right let's have um, a look at this thing over here this is a little switch so let's bring out the um, previous project that um, we built this is the at tiny um what would you call it reset a high voltage resetter for pin one which well i hope i have actually released that video by now this is going to be a bit of a bit of a, a question mark isn't it for you um basically this is for the 80 tiny you put it in here which means you can change the pin one usage back to a reset pin so you can program the chip now the thing that i did use up here as you can see is a little tiny on off slide switch and uh, well one i liked it because i wanted to put some sort of switch on here to prevent the battery going flat rather than just me reminding myself that i've got to take it out and uh, they are breadboard friendly so it just goes directly under strip board and things like that and it goes into breadboards of course as well and they seemed pretty robust now the problem was i didn't actually have any of these all i had was um well what you call toggle switches you know you have to drill a hole screw it on with a nut and then it, it flips up and down not ideal for this sort of thing is it really so i thought great i'm going to get some of these had a quick look on ebay and was quite shocked to find out the price and uh, this is in fact what i found right so here we have five of these for the grand total of one pound 99 now you might think well in the scheme of things that's all right isn't it well it's still quite pricey though for a tiny little switch isn't it but because I hadn't planned ahead I had to buy these so I did and pretty good uh, little switches they are as I say very nice but I thought surely you can get them more cheaply than this so I had a look around and yes well needless to say you could can get them more cheaply if you're prepared to wait a little while uh, so here they are from eBay this is from a non-UK supplier now so this is uh, the Far East somewhere and as you can see you got 50 so 10 times as many for half the price just a pound which is about one dollar 25 perhaps these days uh, the seller there is digital mart 8 and uh, these turned up just um i don't know two or three days ago so about two weeks after i ordered them which is really quick and i must admit stuff from china does sometimes turn up amazingly quick much quicker than you might think and sometimes it turns up much slower however this turned up quick so i could do a direct comparison really and as i say this this little switch here is um is good condition this is one out of that packet of 50 and it's exactly the same as far as i can tell uh, as the one i use there any is there any difference i don't think so a bit difficult to tell isn't it especially on camera so if they are lined up together would you sell it say they're the same i would so I think somebody's imported these and they're selling them at five for two quid. So, hey, now there's a business opportunity for me, isn't there? No, I'm not going to do that. Right, so there we are then. So it's uh, 50 of these little side switches, breadboard friendly and veraboard friendly or strip board friendly. And there's 50 in there. So without being too morbid about it, I suspect they'll see me out. So that's the first thing. And uh, I think that's, that's good value for money, as I say, uh, 99 pence post free uh, for 50 of them brilliant okay job done second thing now i'm still working on uh, benny's cat run in out indicator which i fully expected to have done by now at least partially done because i ordered some of these little potting boxes um, now these are designed to put in electric circuits inside these boxes in fact let me take that lid off there we are so here's a little box you put your little electronic circuit in there and then you fill it with potting compound which is all that black rubbery stuff and it guarantees to make your project watertight now i wasn't going to do that the idea was that i was going to put my pir in there or at least the other way around i wanted to put it that way around so that 
I could drill a hole in the lid for this thing to sh poke through and then this would effectively act as a cover from underneath Benny's catwalk. Except despite my measurements, several times I took the measurements, it won't fit for love and the money because the measurements they give you are in fact external me measurements, not internal. So you've got this ridge on the inside so that cuts it down by quite a bit. And of course you've got these four, four posts here for the lid to screw on as well. So that was never going to work. However, they're nice little dinky things. So I'm going to I'm going to keep those for a future project. Now I did consider briefly not using these rather clunky things that frankly I want to get rid of. I mean they're very nice. They're useful. You can, you've got the sensitivity uh, adjustment on here as well as the length of the pulse. But uh, I thought, well, perhaps I'll just get on with the project and use these and use these little tiny ones that uh, I have. So these would most definitely fit in here, right? So I could drill a hole in the lid that I poke through and then this would just come up from behind and sort of shield all the electronics. I thought, no, I'm not happy with that. The whole point was that I'm going to get start getting rid of these because I just can't find any use for these now where a little tiny one doesn't work better. Yes, you don't get the adjustment on here. It just, whoops, it just goes high for two seconds and then off again. And there's no sensitivity control either. But in every PIR situation I've ever used, it's been absolutely fine to do that. So I thought, no, I'm not going to waste it on there. I'll have to buy some bigger boxes, which I've done, as you can see. Now, these are non-lidded uh, potting compound boxes. And uh, this does fit in there rather nicely. So the idea is that on Benny's catwalk from underneath, I'll drill a hole, push this through as much as I need to, seal it so that um, it won't fall out with some clear acrylic seal or something like that. And then this simply screws in from underneath on the catwalk, it's wooden, a uh, bit of sealant around the edge, screw that underneath, and then that'll be nicely waterproof. So what will happen is this is quite fiddly to this. This will be sticking out like that, but through the, the wooden catwalk that way around there. So there we are, that's, that's gonna be fitted well even possibly today if I get a finger out but certainly this week so I'm glad I didn't use my little tiny ones which I can use for indoor purposes or whatever and I'll keep those little those potting compost compost uh, potting compound boxes as well but <laughs> no, we won't get there right now the second thing I bought um this caught my eye or at least eBay promoted it to me like oh you might be interested in things like this this is a digital display of temperature and here at the end of this wire which plugs in nicely here this is a well it looks pretty much like a waterproof sensor like a DS18B20 temperature sensor something like that but it looks pretty waterproof to me in there so you can use it outside for example Anyway, it comes on this cable, probably about what? It's more than a foot, probably about 40, 50 centimeters, something like that long. Anyway, it plugs into there. This displays the temperature, which has gone up because I've been touching the end. Uh, but it's more than that. It's much, in fact, it's much more than that. Okay, this displays the temperature, but as you can see on here, there's um, a relay and three buttons. So let's just bring that a little bit closer to the camera. Right, there we are. So we got a 12 volt input, which is funnily enough what I'm using my Arduino for over here because I haven't got a power supply with pins like this. I've plugged the power supply into the Arduino down here and I'm just using V in and ground to power this. Cheeky, isn't it? But there we are. So that's a 12 volt in, it's got a decent relay here and the rating of that relay, it says it's 20 amps for 125 volts AC. So it's not 240 AC UK, but you could probably put, I don't know, 10 amps through it maybe. And for DC also, it's 20 amps, 14 volts DC. So it's a pretty chunky relay. And if you've got a relay, it's obviously being switched somehow. And that's what these three buttons do here. As you can see, it says at the back there, it says set, plus and minus, uh, which is good enough for me, but it comes with a, a nice set of instructions and what it does give you um, are not just 
the temperature adjustment, it gives you all these functions down here, P0 to P8. So you can either have it as a cooling switch, that is, when it gets too hot, it switches the relay on to switch on your AC or a fan or something, or as a heating switch to say, it's too cold, switch on the fire. And the way you do that is you press the set button for five seconds, long five seconds, Oh, there we are, and there's P0. Then you press this. No, you don't. You don't press any of that. You press this again. That's for cooling, and that's for heating. All right, great. So you switch between the two. So it's, it depends, you know, when the switch is off. That's fine. So this is now for cooling. So when it gets too hot, the fan comes on, for example, or the relay switches anyway. Now, if you look at the other functions down here, it says return difference. Uh, factory set two degrees. What does that mean? Well, they're talking here about the hysteresis. Having reached a particular temperature, how many degrees has the temperature got to change before it will switch on and off again? Now, two degrees is a little bit much. Most central heatings are probably about half a degree. So you can change that look between 0.1 and 30 degrees difference. Good Lord. Uh, yeah, so that's uh, very useful. Maximum and minimum not quite sure what this is going to do. Anyway, temperature correction. Now that's useful because when I started this video, I think it was saying something like 26 degrees in here, which I don't know if that's true or not. The way I'd calibrate it is to dunk this luckily waterproof connector into a glass of crushed ice, or possibly I'll just make a margarita and put it in there and then drink the margarita. I don't know. But uh, crushed ice with water in it does go down to exactly zero degrees apparently even though water is supposed to freeze at zero, crushed ice with water doesn't freeze. So I could put this in, get it down to exactly zero degrees, and if it doesn't say zero on here, fine. I can correct the temperature by using function P4 up and down. So once again, you press the set button for five rather long seconds. There we go. And then we say, well, I want P4. That's that one. And then set it says how much do you want it to go up by or down by so that's that's pretty good i think i've, I've never actually seen a, a temperature correction like this on any um lcd type temperature display and they're always wrong aren't they they're always just that little bit out or at least not in sync with another one you might have lying around so you wonder which one is in fact correct so i like that there's a delay start so even when it does reach the right temperature for cooling or heating it says well you can de uh, delay it for between zero and ten minutes factory setting is zero minutes so it'll do it straight away but up to ten minutes i guess that's a chance for the um i don't know the temperature to stabilize a bit or something like that you get an alarm i don't know quite where the alarm would come out There's, i can't see any beeper on board i'll have to investigate that a little bit more data lock I guess that means setting all this so people can't fiddle with it and then factory reset. Now that's that's pretty good, I think, in my view. I think that's that's a very useful uh, little device. And I thought, well, if we were going to make one of these, the equivalent using Arduino of some kind, whether that's an 80 tiny 85 or a Nano or even a, a full-size Uno, um, what would that take to make this? All right, there's the, there's the coding involved. And that's not insignificant with all those changes. Three buttons plus a relay, um, various connectors. And I think, well, could be five, six quid maybe. So maybe six dollars, something like that, to do it all. So I thought, well, how much are you selling it for then, eBay, if you, you're promoting this to me? And uh, this is what they told me. And there it is. Oh, in fact, it was AliExpress, not eBay. So AliExpress is saying for £1.15, Free shipping, Whoop. free shipping. I mean, that is, I think, what? Really? How can it be £1.15? I mean, the relay alone is probably worth, you know, 50 pence plus the LCD bit. So I thought, really? So anyway, I read up about it and um, here it is. It tells you all about it. Um, I think, well, for £1.15, I've got to buy some of those, surely. So I did. In fact, I bought three. And why did I buy three? Well, this was one of those things you can keep lying around, can't you, until you can find use for it, which doubtless I will do. And not only that, 
alongside this they actually can sell you one of these which i haven't even unpacked yet but basically it's an acrylic case for that very item so if you if i show you that there we are so it's the item you can see behind there look and then a nice little acrylic clay case just to sort of sandwich it in really and protect it so you can screw it to a wall without anybody touching it because i guess you you could have mains on here somewhere couldn't on those pins i don't think i'd want to use it for mains not the way it's designed at the moment health and safety and all that but uh, anyway i think the acrylic case was nice and that was 82 pence so i thought for less than the price of coffee you know going to any one of these coffee houses one pound 15 plus 82 pence i can't get a coffee for that in fact so i thought i'm going to have some of those i bought three in total I think once you go above three you can't get it free shipping anymore because aliexpress has some kind of rule that when it gets above a certain value then you've got to pay for shipping or you just order them independently one after the other but uh, anyway i ordered three and i thought that was pretty good so i'm gonna probably put one of these even though i've got my module up in the attic now monitoring my water tank temperatures and things this is if i extend this certainly then i could have this temperature visible downstairs somewhere in that acrylic case possibly in a cupboard directly from the attic and uh, set various high low functions and bleepers and whatnot so if it goes it goes down to i don't know let's say zero or not above zero zero is too late the tank's frozen if it goes down to i don't know four degrees say um then it might sound an alarm or even it could switch on the heater up there i've got actually got a heater in my attic especially to prevent any kind of frozen pipes or anything so it could switch it on automatically couldn't it anyway so there we are i thought for for one pound 15 plus that case of course you don't have to buy the case you can just just buy the unit itself one pound 15 i thought that was worth sharing so there we are right time for a demo then so what we've, i've set this up now to a half degree difference and it should cool down once it reaches 29.3 so i'm going to hold this to bring it up to 29.3 and hopefully that relay should click in so if i hold it 29 oh half a degree difference oh there it goes right so it's clicked in there of course the temperature did rise very rapidly didn't it and it should cut off again now or well, once it drops down now i'm going to hold this in fact above a fan i've got a desk fan here that you might have seen in a previous video where i put a little control on it but uh, well i'm just going to hold this over it just cool it down a bit quicker right i've speeded this bit up actually because otherwise it's going to take you forever isn't it there we go look five still taking a long time wait for it oh finally 29.3 there we are and it clicks off so what temperature then does it go on by if we hold that again and this time just a little bit So it should have gone on at 29.8 and i think the temperature was rising so rapidly it had trouble catching up but there we are it works that's cooling um i set the temperature difference to say to 0.5 and uh, what else did i say no it didn't do anything else just playing about with it really so good little thing that i'm definitely going to install that somewhere even if it's just outside and turns on a, a light or something i don't know something great well i hope you found that useful it's um quick little um video today for a change i know i know i'll have to get used to this short and sharp you know and of course there's nothing to do with arduinos but i thought these ebay products were worth sharing and uh well you never know it might interest you as well and pique your interest and you can have a look as well at various things it's always worthwhile incidentally looking around aliexpress just seeing what they got because obviously i wasn't looking for one of these they just promoted that as part of the search criteria i was using and I thought, well, for one pound fifteen, if it had been five pound, I wouldn't have bothered. But for one pound fifteen, I thought, yeah, there we are then. Okay, great. Hope you found this very short video useful, and uh, I'll see you in the next video. I hope you're finding these videos useful and interesting. There are plenty more videos to choose, and a couple are shown below. And if you'd like to subscribe to this channel, just click on my picture below and enjoy the rest of the videos. Thanks for watching.